I can't believe it's been 20 years since I first encountered Peggy McIntosh's Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, um, her article about white privilege. I was teaching an introduction to black psychology course at a large state university in the South. I had a class of probably 25 or 30 students. And I had decided that year to include a unit on whiteness studies to give the students another window into how race could be understood as we uh, thought about it from a psychological perspective. And one of my colleagues said, have you thought about including the work of Peggy McIntosh? And at that time I hadn't heard of it. So I said, uh, show me a reference, let me see something. And so she sent me Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. So when I read through it, I thought, this is great. It's the perfect counterpoint to some of the more theoretical work that we're reading. And when I brought it to the classroom, I had the students read each of the points one by one. You know, we took turns reading the document. And that was a very powerful exercise because students were pausing and making commentary about how they were having aha moments or about how they were making connections that they hadn't made before or how this was reconfiguring how they understood race. Many of them had never seen whiteness before. They'd never seen privilege. And talking about black psychology seemed natural and normal, but talking about whiteness as a thing was new for so many people. So I could feel that there was a room full of people waking up to something that they hadn't seen before and becoming change agents as a result. That was very gratifying for me as a teacher, but it was also gratifying for me as a scholar and as a person living in the world, you know, with a racial identity and a racial experience. Um, I, the one that really stuck out for me, and I think for many of my students, was the one that said, I can count on getting Band-Aids in my color. I mean, whoever thinks about something like that? You go in the drugstore, you grab a box, but to realize that that's part of the visual culture of race, the way race is embedded into our physical environment, that's a real wake up. It makes you realize how deep the work is that we need to do to make the change that will really make this world truly a different place. And so when I came to the Wellesley Centers for Women, I was excited to learn about the SEED project because that's where the action is really translating that knowledge about privilege into a changed environment for learning and for curriculum. And I thought this is so awesome because it makes us able to actually change what younger kids experience and to help people to have those wake up moments well before college and to feel included before they ever have to take a black psychology class. And so it's been wonderful to be here. It's been wonderful to be Peggy's colleague. It's been exciting to know that the Wellesley Centers for Women is part of what has made this work possible. And so, you know, these are just some of the, the treasures of my being part of the Wellesley Centers for Women and part of what makes me glad about us celebrating Peggy.